I think when most people think about the Reformation, they sort of know what they're, they're talking about. I mean, everyone's heard of the Reformation, everybody's heard of Martin Luther. Many people will know that we have coming up um, fairly shortly the 500th anniversary of Luther famously nailing his protest against indulgences, the 95 Theses, to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg. Uh, and the Reformation represents something broader than just that theological argument. It seems to many people a turning point in history, a moment of transition from the medieval to the modern, and also foundational to many of the things that we take for granted about life in Europe and the Western world today. Uh, liberty of conscience, for example, freedom of the individual to think for themselves rather than be told what to think by an institutional church. Um, what we try to do in this book is not necessarily to say that all these ideas about the Reformation are nonsense. They're not entirely nonsense. But there is a more interesting and more complicated story to be told, I think. It involves Luther, but it also spreads more widely to involve a wider range of individuals and a wider range of places. Perhaps what we're trying to do with this volume is to unsettle the Reformation from some of these moorings that it's had in people's minds, to decenter the Reformation. Um, so, for example, it's important that we include um, front and centre some of the people who've been footnotes to the story in the past, seen as marginal, uh, those protesters who didn't agree with Luther and Calvin, uh, the so-called radicals or Anabaptists, but who, uh, for much of the early part of the 16th century, have absolutely as much right to be seen as part of the Reformation process as those like Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, and other well-known theological names who end up being seen as the standard bearers of the Reformation. Um, also, of course, the Reformation is seen very much as a protest against the late medieval church and the beginning of a new movement of Protestantism that firmly separates itself from that church. That is also true, but I think we've tried to get across the idea that the Reformation is a creation of late medieval Christianity as much as it is a protest against it. Um, and also that um, Catholics don't just disappear into a corner to do their own thing, that Catholicism remains very much part of the story of Reformation changes. There is a Catholic Reformation which is just as central to what is happening as the Lutheran Reformation or the Calvinist Reformation.